Then comes the blood supply of the breast. Then comes the blood supply of the breast. So let's now know the blood supply of the breast and again its clinical relevance. If this is a breast tissue, right? And breast, we all very well know, is supplied by branches of the internal memory artery branches of the internal memory artery it also receives blood supply from the branches of the axillary artery and it also receives a blood supply from the branches of the posterior intercostal arteries we know that so internal memory artery axillary artery and its branches posterior intercostal artery and its branches supplying breast. We know that. We also very well know that the all the veins in our body runs parallel to the artery. So, there will be corresponding veins, a posterior intercostal vein, there will be a posterior intercostal vein draining breast, there will be a axillary vein and its tributary draining breast and there is internal memory vein and a tributary draining breast. Now, before I proceed further, again a question asked in our exam, out of the three vessels which are supplying breast, which vessel mainly contributes to the blood supply of the breast? The main contribution is coming from, remember, internal memory artery and its branches. Now comes another very, very important clinical relevance of this blood supply. We all know that malignancies mainly spread by a lymphatic route while a sarcomas or mesenchymal malignancies, the, the tumor arises, the, the, the malignant tumors arising from the mesenchymal element are called sarcomas, we know that, they spread by a bloodborne route, right? mainly malignancy spread by a lymphatic root while sarcomas mainly spread by a blood bound root we know that so when it's spread by a blood bound root it most of the time goes to bone and in bone after bone it goes to lung and after lung it goes to liver and then it may also go to brain the metastasis of the breast most commonly goes to bone now, which bone it most of the time goes to? Again, a question asked very commonly in exam. It is mainly a lumbar vertebra. It is mainly a lumbar vertebra and it can go to the pelvis also, but mainly first it goes to the lumbar vertebra. Now, there was a question in our exam that how this metastasis of the breast reaches vertebra. The metastasis of the breast reaches vertebra through this. This is very important understanding. One of the tributary of posterior intercostal vein, one of the tributary of posterior intercostal vein, posterior intercostal vein we also know drains breast. One of the tributary of the posterior intercostal vein communicates with the Batson plexus of the vertebra. It communicates with the Batson plexus Batson plexus, we all know, is a valveless plexus of veins in the vertebra. So, this is connected with the Batson plexus of veins in the vertebra, one of the tributary. And through this, the malignant cells reach the Batson plexus. Now, once the malignant cell reach the Batson plexus, it is quite natural that they should be involving a thoracic vertebra because they are, they are reaching. But what happens is these metastatic cells with the gravity settles down and they settles at a lumbar vertebra because of the gravitational thing. So, most of the time it first involves a lumbar vertebra. So, how the metastasis reaches the vertebra is a recent INICT question also. Now, this metastasis to bone this metastasis to bone from carcinoma breast again a question asked is both again a question wherever please i am saying a question asked please highlight that in your notes 
बोथ इज ऑस्टियोलिटिक एंड ऑस्टियोब्लास्टिक